For your information, there's a lot more to ogres than people think. Example? Example? Okay, um... Ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No! Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No! Layers! Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. <sighs> Oh, you both have layers. Oh. You know, not everybody like onions. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I'm joined by my co-host Abraham and Nick. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm vibing right now. I, you listening feeling to good? Uh, He's listening to Sexy Red. I'm listening to Ski. I thought he was listening to All Star. I saw her face. Yeah, yeah. seriously, that's a <laughs> now I'm a believer. <laughs> well, Dad, I, that's what we should open up as. Yeah. Just sing that. The whole song. I'm a believer. I'm not gonna leave her, dude. Surprise. Okay, what's more iconic, that song or All Star? Probably All Star. All Star. I would think All Star. Like yeah. you can't think you of All Star and not think of Shrek, right? Can't yeah. do it. No. There's no way. Can't do it. It sucks for all, for Smash Mouth because they are like only known for those two songs. Yeah. But like iconic for Shrek, because you hear that and you're like, dude, oh, dude, Shrek, get out of my swamp. Yeah. There's so or, many quotes. Or dude. or um, not the gum drop buttons. Love. Shrek yeah. is love. Not the gum drop buttons. Yeah. Yeah, where did that come from? Dude, that's a that's horrible a, thing on YouTube. That's a green text meme. It is. Huh? I it's remember seeing that, and then, but I never understood the context behind it. What it's is a, it? It's a green text meme that was just written on some forum. Like a 4chan thing? Yeah, and then people in Gmod animated it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shrek is love, Shrek and is life. Yeah, dude, I remember when we were in high school, that video yeah, that took the world by over. storm. It was crazy. You remember seeing that in high Everybody school? Everybody's showing I, everyone I that video. I probably do. I don't Bro, know. Bro, I remember specifically watching it in PE during um, Cardio Monday. <laughs> and they showed me what Shrek is Low, Shrek is Life was. And I was like, yeah. oh, what is this? <laughs> this is <laughs> gross. Yeah. Oh, it's... That video is crazy. That's an iconic... That's yeah. like That's like internet lore at this point. I can't believe I don't... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's like a Gmod type thing. Yes. Man. It's like the Left 4 Dead character model. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's two minutes? Okay. Yeah. That's you have to watch it All I remember is he penetrates my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> yeah, bro. The way he like flies in the room or something like that. Yeah. Do they make Shrek like a, like a villain? No. No. Uh, kind of like you remember? Like that, <laughs> like that uh, Winnie the Pooh? Horror oh, movie? No, 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 not no, like no, that. Not like that <laughs> in that aspect. Dude. I th- no, I think in this aspect, the kid in the story of Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life, like admires him so. Yeah, he's much like in love with him. That like he like <laughs> dreams of him. Dreams of him, and then he visits him one night, and oh, I see. Stuff happens. <laughs> Gosh, eight you know, years ago, and we're still talking about Shrek. That one reminds me of that movie that you showed me on YouTube. Um. And the first time I watched it, it was just, ho- I was like, what are you showing me? It's about a dad and a son. The strange thing about the Johnsons. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I have not, I've only heard bad things about the that. Strange thing. Don't that's watch Ari that. Aster, that's Ari Aster's first film. His and short it's film. It's freaky, right? It's freaky. I remember, I remember, find, I remember finding that and being like, what the? Was this? That, and not knowing that, that it was Ari Aster at the uh, time. That's what Ari Aster, it kind of reminds me of. Shrek is Love kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, it's one of those things where you watch it and you're like, what the hell did I just watch? Just like, <laughs> I just gotta like show this to someone shirt. else. <laughs> just like Obey the Walrus. Oh yeah, Obey the Walrus still freaks me out. Wow. Yeah, if I hear the song, you know, I'm not I'm yeah. turning away. This and seeing that girl going <laughs> walking around. Oh, I'm like, gosh. no, no, turn it off. <laughs> That's a locking new memory for me. <laughs> Obey the walrus. Yes, yes, yes. And Dude. you'd pull it up like randomly like as you're walking to school. You'd be like, oh, look at this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <Can't> <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. Yeah. No, dude, I cannot look at her. Put her away. Yeah. It is this guy. Yes. No, bro. Yep. yep, there it goes. 
She's all. <laughs> yeah. I don't this know what it internet. is. Yeah. It still freaks me out. I can't do it. No, I'm, I don't want to watch that. It's like tiptoe. No, no, the, no. The, the music the is like it. Play a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking simish, dude. <laughs> Play I don't know bit. what's more terrifying. That Play or a that. little bit. Play a little bit. I, I don't know. We get copyrighted. No, yeah, but it's on YouTube already. Three seconds. We still get copyright claimed. <laughs> it's like all distorted Yeah and like reverbed no, and all like that I stuff I swear That's more terrifying Right after that part it's gonna sound like me <laughs> <laughs> I won't play more <laughs> I won't but <laughs> that, was, that was good That was a, that was a right. room, bro. Dude Well enough about the internet What lore. are we talking about? Well what? I think I think we're warranted in talking about a little bit of like internet lore and memes and stuff like that and everything Because Shrek has been memed into oblivion oblivion man yeah. like we start with the shrek is love shrek is life things your you know typical like bottom text memes you know things about shrek as well and him going yeah seeing that play out i was like dude that's i haven't seen that so like, well, that's where that's from i didn't realize it was him from going, this movie why does he do that? <laughs> I've got no clue. It's almost like they were like, let's do this and people are going to use it later. I have no clue. Yeah, that It also reminds me of like when you're with your best friends and you're like, you're told not to laugh at <laughs> the situation. <and> you're <laughs> <laughs> or, like, or like when you're going up to do a presentation and you're trying to be... St- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just look at your friends and are like... <laughs> and they're standing there like, you know what I'm talking about this yeah. video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what that. Oh, it's like. uh, that's the, that <laughs> that's like a monkey. That that's monkey like guys all. <laughs> 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 Do we all live the same uh, life? We all have the same experiences. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, Shrek has been just alive on the internet s- for as long as it's been out. Yeah, and. I mean, it's even been featured in like its own video games. I remember Shrek was a playable character on Tony Hawk Underground Two. <laughs> no, was he really? Yeah, like you could if you beat the game, you unlocked him and you can skate as Shrek. <laughs> what? And um, I remember doing that whenever I played that game. Um, he's been in my life for <laughs> shoot. I mean, it came out in two thousand one, so probably ever since. Yeah, huh? It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I mean, at this point, I've. It's probably going to get to the point where whenever I have children, th- I'm, I'm going to show them Shrek. Isn't it I, perfect? I mean, you have yeah. to. I feel like. It's I mean, my nephew ha- like went through a Shrek phase, which is kind of crazy to think about. Like, the kid is four, and he knows who Shrek is. Yeah. And that movie came out whenever I was a kid. And it's w- it's weirdly wholesome, though. It is. It's and got it, a lot of it, introspection. It does, and it has such a wholesome message. It does. And I never remember it having that as a kid, maybe just because I haven't watched it in a long time. But w- by the end of it, I was just like, that movie like genuinely has a great message mm-hmm. about like acceptance and finding someone who loves you for you mm-hmm. and like n- not being afraid to, to show the true you to somebody and opening up and breaking down those barriers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like. I was watching this and I was like, "This is a great message for a kid, you know? Like, I you can should be, be ugly and that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Like, or you, you <laughs> should Sponge be. Bob, bro, I'm ugly and I'm proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, I should be surrounded by people who who like me for who I am, mm-hmm. you know? And if I am a big, smelly, stupid, ugly ogre, and people like me because of that, then I should be around those people, mm-hmm. you know, and not around the people who who dislike me because of it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So speak it. Keep on speaking that truth. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. Um, but I don't know if we formally introduced the movie <laughs> that we're talking about today. No, we haven't. And we're actually watching, we're not watching, we're talking about the 2001 movie Shrek. It was written by Andrew Adamson and Vicki Jensen, written by William Stee, Ted Elliott, and Terry Rose- Rosio. I believe you. Um, <coughs> and. Basically, this guy. What? It's yeah. just no, <laughs> the the way you were going through those names, and he was just like, "All right, yeah, I believe I, it. I believe it. <laughs> Whatever you say, I believe it." I didn't, I didn't write any of them down, so I was just saying, "All right." I had down Ted Elliott, Terry Rossio, Joe Stillman, and Roger S. H. Shulman. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least well, that's <laughs> what was credited at the end of the film. Oh, the, what, as the oh, writers? I, I just wrote down what a, uh, IMDb had. Okay. As the writers or directors? As the writers. And then yeah. directors, I had Andrew Adamson and Vicky Jensen. Vicky Jensen. Wow. Yeah. I hate that name. Sorry. What? Vicky. Icky Vicky? That's what I think of. Yeah, I think so, Just the thought of being around you makes me oh so... That's, dude, this slaps. Very good. I'm very hard. Very Icky good Vicky. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. What's Shrek about? Sorry. Shout out to that twinkle. That just like the stars it's been. <laughs> That's what I think of all the time. <laughs> the Shrek is about a an ogre who is just trying to live his life and gets what? invaded. In by my swamp. these fairy squatters, t- yes, by they're getting squatters. Fairy tale squatters by these fairy tale people who get dumped there by or get told to go land there by Lord Farquaad, who is the ruler of this land, which is called the, uh, the village that they're in or the city is Duloc. Yes, Duloc. Duloc. So he's the kind of ruler of that and orders them to all leave and basically. This is about an ogre trying to fight back and get his swamp back. Mm-hmm. And he just has to embark on a quest on a order quest to do it. Finds his uh, true love while doing it. Finds his true love. Yeah, it's an unlikely fairy tale. Mm-hmm. One that uh, might not have ever gotten told if it was in the way of uh, big corporations like they're trying to make fun of in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. And I noticed they're kind of like putting jabs at Disney and mm-hmm. things like that, which is kind of funny. It is. Looking back at it It now. is very funny. But yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to talk about Shrek with yeah, you guys. It was it was definitely a fun rewatch. It, it, yeah. I was smiling the whole time. I was I was actually happy I watched it cuz it's I haven't watched it in so long. Yeah. I found myself, whenever I was on the rewatch, noticing parts where I was like, man, I just, I remember this so vividly as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, specifically the part whenever um, Princess Fiona's doing the kung fu. Oh, yeah. Like, and as a kid to me, I was just like, dude, I remember this, like, scene for scene. Or even, um, like, the the little montage with them blowing up the frogs (laughs) as the air balloons and the snakes and stuff. Like, little things like that I remember so vividly. Or even, like, um, the fight whenever Shrek goes into Duloc and fights all of the, the knights. Yep. It like, is the... And I... I don't have, have a reputation. reputation. Yes, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. How about we settle this with the pine? Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Like, there are just so many scenes in this movie that are written wonderfully executed incredibly voice acted great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and it's uh, the the whole story is cohesive and it all makes sense and like as a kid i never really ac- appreciated the film in that aspect so being able to watch it again and being like man this movie is actually really well written mm-hmm. really well directed it's got a, a a streamlined story that is easy to follow and like it also it like it's not just for kids and it's not dumbed down there's you know humor in there that I didn't even understand until I watched it most recently on the on the rewatch, like that I never picked up on as a kid. Right. And like there's stuff in there that is that is for everybody. And um yeah. Excited to talk yeah. about it too. Before we get to spoilers, did you guys ever watch the other Shreks? Yes. yes. I do Shrek two I watched two and three, I think. I was obsessed okay. with the Christmas version. <laughs> Shrek the Halls? Yes. Specifically oh, because the it, kids, right? Yes. Something like and that. Specifically because they introduced the kids and I would Die laughing because there's a scene where all the kids are farting, bro, <laughs> while they're asleep, and it's like they make a Christmas song, and I remember crying laughing <laughs> to this, bro. Out like of the farts. To the farts, and I, to this day, I think the farts are the funniest thing ever. I crop dust people all the time it's, at my job. It's true. the funniest thing ever, bro. Bro, disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard question. Which one do you think is better, one or two? I remember two being much funnier. Ooh. I haven't like, seen two in a while, so I want to rewatch two. Like to I remember two, them cranking the humor up, like to ten. Yes. Like like that's enough, where more like, of the memes come from too. The enough, more recent ones. Yeah. Enough. Like I remember two specifically the part whenever they're like mimicking cops, and they're going to arrest uh, Shrek when he's in his human form, and to pepper spray him, 
they get a pepper mill and go oh, <laughs> really? in his eyes and he's like ah, ah like <laughs> like his stuff like that and like you watch it now as a kid and you're like dude that's so creative yeah. it's hilarious you know, like people in this day and age are obviously not going to have pepper spray. What are we going to do yeah. to try to make it seem like we're apprehending him? You know, let's grind pepper in his eyes. Same thing. You know, <laughs> or even like I think of the the scenario where like I, f- I think he's locked up or something like that. And like the three blind mice and a couple of people lower Pinocchio down. And um, in order to get him out, like he need they need him to like grow his nose. And he's like, well, I need you to tell a lie. Tell a lie. Oh, and uh, he's like. Uh, I'm wearing ladies' underwear, and it doesn't grow. And then he goes, <laughs> "Are you?" <laughs> and then he's like, "No." And then it grows. And then they like the three blind mice go back up there, and they like pull it up, and he's wearing like a pink thong. <laughs> and like, yeah, it's little things like that, as well as like it's been so jokes. long since I've seen it. Yeah, it has been long. Yeah. So I think I'm not gonna give my answer on which one's the best, better one. Mm. Well, they're both streaming on Peacock right now, which yeah. is where I watched the film. And I must say, I watched it in 4K HDR, which was really nice. I was yeah. surprised at how well the film held up. And, um, yeah, when I was watching it, I was just like, man, this was made in 2001. And even with these, like, 4K upgrades and all that stuff, the the movie still looks great. Right. I was uh, very pleased to see that. Uh, so if you want to watch it and you have Peacock, it's streaming there. If not... Pop it in on the old DVD or VHS or Blu-ray, whatever it is that you got, and take a stroll down memory lane with us as we talk about Shrek. Obviously, if you haven't seen it, we're going to be talking about spoilers. I would be surprised (laughs) if you have said that you've never seen Shrek because this movie has just permeated popular culture for the past 20 years. Um, I would really like have such a shocked look if if you told told me you don't know who Shrek is. I'd be like. I'd be like, are you kidding me? For I, real? I, I no way. Don't don't, <laughs> don't joke about that. You yeah. don't know? You know what? Shrek. That's like almost, um, I, wanna, I don't want to call it that, but I want to call it that. I'm going to call it that. I don't care. It's like un American, like if you don't want <laughs> Shrek. If you don't know who Shrek is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's he is that popular. And That's what I'm saying. He's, there's no way you don't know him. Yeah. I w- again, I would be surprised if and you have yeah. what they. So. Shrek has been so far, like, he's been, he's had so many crossovers. They're making Shrek Crocs, I think. Shrocks or something. Yeah, Yeah. like, like this year. They're going to have little ear gibbets? Yeah, no, really. (laughs) Oh, yeah, look, it's right here. Oh, no, that's got to be fake. It's (laughs) change.org. Make Shrek Crocs real. It's his face (laughs) right on the (laughs) front. (laughs) <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're coming out something like that. That's funny. Uh, um, we just need 5,000 more signatures. That's funny. So, if you haven't seen Shrek, check it out. Streaming on Peacock. We're going to talk about spoilers, obviously. So, if you care about that sort of thing, take a pause. Come back. If you don't care or if you um, you know, want to continue listening because you're that curious about what we think about Shrek, continue listening. As always, we're going to start off with our first category, which is favorite scenes. So Abe, do you want to hit us off? Uh, I you have to talk about the opening. There's you no way you cannot it's talk about the opening. It's uh, iconic. Yeah, it's it's where you get the use of All Star. I mean, and it, when I watched the opening of the film as well, I immediately identified with Shrek and was yeah. just like, "Dude, I understand what homie wants. Get off my swamp. He wants to be able to just hang out on his piece of property, swim, paint." chill have a good time recline next to a fireplace you know eat some food that you know he's probably foraging out Mm -hmm. there self-sustaining he's not bothering nobody he's living by his means peace and quiet seems like a great life Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and again you get introduced to all-star and you just get to see the type of life that an ogre is living and you're like oh but then again he's an ogre Mm -hmm. you don't judge a book by its cover. To him, Dude, that's that, commonplace. That yeah. mud bath looks so good. No, 100%. <laughs> it looks so I good. Would take a mud bath. Like, I don't know how they animated it. It looks good. Like yeah. I want to take a bath in that. <laughs> I I was reading actually that in order to 
animated as realistic as possible. The effects team took real mud showers. Did they really? Yeah, to like kind of simulate what it would be like to actually take a real. Well, yeah, I feel like, like it would have to feel. Yeah, what so it like, is so to get the consistency. Yeah, and stuff. gosh, it looks so. I don't know how to explain it. It just looks good. It looks soothing. It looks like the f- like the frame rate of the mud is so buttery smooth. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what it yeah. reminds me of? Moose. Ooh. Like the fluffy stuff? Like the fluffy like stuff, the consistency yeah. of it? Yeah. And like if you just go in it, it's just going to s- sink through, in it, but it's going to be like smooth. Because mm. mm. that mud doesn't stick to him. <laughs> no, and I think, what is he, doesn't he like brush his teeth with... Uh, with that and the bug. Yep. He like squishes the bug out. And yep. Yeah. It's all good. It's a perfect way to show who this guy is. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he's in his own swamp. He's got like, he's eating the nastiest food possible. Like Dude, eyeballs. eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Jinx. All the grossest stuff in the world. And then you see him painting all these signs. And then what you come to realize is he's painting those beware ogre signs, mm-hmm. like trying to get people away. Yeah. And I love that night. Like you also see these like, villagers like getting all of ready getting their pitchforks and yeah. their fu- their fires ready and yeah. they're going and they're talking about like what an ogre does to you grinds your bones into dust <laughs> and all that <laughs> stupid stuff and you just see strike sitting there going no that's a giant yeah <laughs> and they don't Ogres really like to peel your skin off and <laughs> yeah <laughs> it scares them and that that still of him going run <laughs> 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 tell me that's not like kind of terrifying because yeah. <laughs> you see like the, like, like <laughs> spit coming off of his teeth, <laughs> yes. and you even see it on the guy's faces. Yes. Like, seeing his gums and his teeth and everything and just how, like, vile they make him look. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's perfect. He's kind of playing into his role yeah. just to get as solitary as possible. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. It's good. I even opening. love him, like, being so confident in his, abil- in his ability oh, to yeah. scare them that, like, once he's yelled at them and they just kind of sit there, like, stunned, he just kind of goes... This is the part where you run away. Yeah. And then they're like, ah! and like go run away real quick and he just has a laugh. And, yeah. You know, it's it's such a good introduction to our character. And we immediately know like what this guy wants. He just wants to be left alone. Um, because people all of his life have just been trying to do exactly what we just saw. They've been trying to get him. Yeah. And it's either been for uh reward, which it looks like in the beginning these villagers are trying to collect a reward if they uh, bring in this ogre yeah. um, or like it's out of fear you know that they want to try to take something out that they don't understand yeah so yeah and from there it just it just, I feel like there's no way you can't I feel like we just gotta talk about the whole movie but we, sh- we can't <laughs> it's because from there you get introduced to another iconic character yeah Donkey and Donkey man yeah like I two. lump in these two it's as like the intro dude it's so funny too donkey is so funny they're yeah. they're lord farquaad has said you know collect all these fairy, fairy tale, tale creatures and you get paid and you see this whole long list of or a whole long line of a bunch of fairy tale stuff like i think you see fairies locked up and you see like a bear Pinocchio, the bear yeah, the three little bears yep. the three little pigs. three by my yes yeah. and then you see this old lady with a donkey and they watch she walks up and she's like this donkey can talk and they're like, oh, okay, that's 10 shekels if you can prove it. <laughs> and Donkey's just sitting there like, <laughs> look at her. And she's, like, she's like, you mother donkey, dog. <laughs> like, yeah. She pretends to, to use his mouth and talk. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And then uh, what happens? Like, he, uh, he ends up kicking, like I think it's like Tinkerbell. Behind I, yeah. I think it's supposed to be, right? And it, like, she ends up falling on him, and it causes him to fly. And he starts floating, and he goes, Hey, I can fly. And they're going, he can fly. He can talk. Yep. And then he goes on this whole diatribe. <laughs> you may have seen the super fly, something else, but I bet you ain't never seen a donkey fly. A no. talking donkey fly. Yeah, yeah, and then he eventually falls down and goes on the run, loses his owner and all that stuff, and just goes out into the woods and eventually runs into Shrek. Shrek. Yeah. And Shrek is there to scare off. And, you know, the guards that were chasing him and all of that stuff. And um, not only does Donkey witness it, he uh, takes notice that, like, hey, people are afraid of you. And what you do at scaring these people away and keeping them uh, at bay, you're good at it. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime I think of this whole, like, interaction scene, I think of I Am Legend. Mm -hmm. 
whenever um oh yeah whenever I he, make a waffle. yeah no whenever he's um <laughs> whenever he wakes up in the uh in I the person's thinking. house when he wakes up in the person's house and he goes he starts quoting it and he starts going uh man those gods they're tripping themselves like bears in the wood right there like and he's like uh i ate, man i ate some rotten berries and I had some strong guests sticking out of my butt that day. And like he does, like does his whole thing, and yeah. then everyone's looking at him, and he just goes, "I like Shrek." That I this whole scene reminds me of I that imagine. scene in I Am Legend. Um, but this this is a great scene too, and it's like our two iconic characters meeting one another for the first time, and Shrek being completely annoyed mm-hmm. by who Donkey is, and just wanting to be left alone and telling him to go leave you know and do his own thing and all this stuff and donkey also being like an incredibly relatable character and just being like uh i'm just trying to find uh, a friend i don't have any friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm not going out by that back out there by myself and you know he's like you know i got an idea i'll stick with you mm-hmm. and they end up becoming Dude, best I, friends because of it i forget that donkey is eddie murphy yeah and he plays a masterfully so too. Great. so good like he i think i really do think eddie murphy is the perfect fit mm-hmm. for someone like donkey yeah i would 100 percent agree for, i just yeah. forget that he plays him yeah i also i forget like this is a little bit down but i forget that cameron diaz is plays fiona plays fiona mm. i never even realized that till now oh really i just yeah i never knew yeah I didn't care enough to. You to know check. who? You want to know a cast that I did not know? I know Monsieur Hood, the guy that who blew my mind. Monsieur Hood is He's played Victor. by Vincent Casel, <laughs> who is also played by Vince in La Hen. <laughs> that is so. What a crossover! Yeah, when I I went through the cast and I saw him, I was like, "Who does he play?" And I seen Monsieur Hood, and yes. it was coming up, and I was like. <laughs> this is the same guy. It's the same guy that plays Vince in La Hen. What? Oh, this so is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I thought that was wild. Um, but yeah, I I love this whole those those two scenes. Mm-hmm. I I lump them in kind of just as the intro is one, just because I feel like they go hand in hand with one another yeah. as well. How do you guys think about the um the bachelorette picking scene when <laughs> we get to see who uh, <laughs> we get to see who Lord Farquaad is? He's this really short kind of tyrannical ruler almost mm-hmm. and he's really trying to get rid of all the fairy tale creatures and he's got uh, the gingerbread man like hooked up yeah he's got he broke his legs off cookie sheet. yeah they co- broke his legs off he's stuck there and they're dunking him in milk yeah like kind of like waterboarding yeah. him and uh i laugh at the scene where she's he's like do you know the muffin man yeah. the muffin man yeah <laughs> they, they do that whole dumb kids rhyme or whatever yeah um and then I, they bring in the magic mirror. Yes. The mi- magic mirror on the wall. And he's like, you have, all you need is a queen. Yeah. You can't be a king because you don't have a, a, a queen yet. You haven't married a princess. Yeah. And uh, he's like, you could, and it goes into like this whole like game show Dating style. Show. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you but can choose contestant one. And I think it's Cinderella. Yeah. Con- and it's, it's like, no it's all way. her talent or it's all her hobbies. It's like yeah. cleaning for her grandmother and cleaning yeah. her evil sister. Yeah. And then it's uh yeah Snow White who s- lives with seven seven men yeah but don't don't worry she's not easy yeah again <laughs> that's yeah. humor that we would not get yeah when we were younger yeah, yeah. and uh, the last one being Fiona yeah and it's almost like the worst one yeah because she's like this one lives at the top of the Tyus Tower surrounded by a dragon and a boiling pit of hot boiling lava he's <laughs> like but don't worry. She loves. She also loves pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. Yeah, like, <laughs> <it's> like <what? laughs> I, I had a weird feeling though. We were rewatching this movie. The mirror was kind of like put off by Lord Farquaad. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he was helping him just so he didn't get smashed, killed. Yeah. Right? Because you saw freaking Monsieur saw going, going, going <laughs> <laughs> kind of like threat, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's it's exactly. He, that. I feel like that's why he did the game show. Yeah. Yeah. That's just funny. Yeah. It's it's it like bringing a more. Um, I even love. Whenever they're telling him, he's like, so who are you going to pick? Bachelorette number one. Yeah, and everyone's going, and one, goes, two, three. three, three, three. Yeah, homeboy going, three. Pick number three, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, it's oh, great. it's fantastic. And then from here, it literally jumps to my next favorite scene is when they're going to Lord Farquaad's castle. Mm-hmm. And they get that little um, info booth. Yeah, the the info booth. booth. This 
As See? a kid. Yes. Yes. This coupled I with love. the tournament. Yeah. Yes, for me. 100%. Is incredible. That whole like next ten minutes. So they get to this Welcome to the life <laughs> such a birthday. Dude. It's <laughs> it ingrained in my brain. Hands. Yeah. yeah. Ingrained and in my brain. They get here and again, Eddie Murphy for me kills it here. It's just he's like <laughs> he's just that annoying like <laughs> little uh, it's that annoying, annoying little voice that you just can't get rid of yeah. is donkey yeah and they get this infomer- infomercial info thing and they're like well, this is where we are and it's so quiet in this castle and they come to find out Lord Farquaad is holding a competition to see who is going to rescue Fiona yes and immediately I'm like, dude, this guy's a coward just because he's short. He can't, he yeah. can't go rescue her. His little speech too is even wild. Whenever he was like, basically telling them like, you guys are on a mission to find out who can save Princess Fiona, and he says something to the effect of, "Some of you guys may die, but it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to." Make. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> He's oh, the horrible. He's you remember saying that. Yeah, yeah, he's a horrible, horrible leader. Yeah, and eventually, what he's doing is having these guys weed each other out to see who's the big, like the best warrior, the bravest, most the bravest courageous. knight, you yeah. know, and all this stuff, so that way they can go save Fiona and then bring her back to him, so that way he can get married. And um, Shrek shows up, Dude. just about the right time, wanting to know what are all these fairy tale creatures doing in my swamp. I'm trying to get my swamp what back. Are you doing yep. So funny, everyone's like, oh, it's ugly, it's hideous. And he goes, that's not very nice. It's, it's just, just a donkey. donkey. <laughs> <laughs> so again, good. Again, that kind of sad. He's just suppressing his feelings. Yeah. True. Divert. Yeah, I mean, he's used to it. That's all he knows, kind of. <laughs> yeah. That's why he wants to be alone. Yeah. And so eventually, because Shrek shows up and says, like, I want these fairy tale creatures off my land, Lord Farquaad says, new plan. Whoever can kill the ogre is the champion, and then you will get to go and and rescue Fiona. So then all of these knights end up turning on the ogre, mm-hmm. and Shrek goes to town on these guys. Dude, I love seeing him whoop some butt here. Yeah, especially to, I think it's Joan Jett that, that plays the song. Bad, Bad Reputation. Reputation. Especially this whole scene like set to that song. It, it's so good. It's huh? the perfect energy. It is. Like, it's the perfect energy for him to just be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fighting, Again, doing wrestling moves. Passes like, yeah. it's so it's, it's yeah, perfect. yeah, doing the WWE Doing room. wrestling moves, throwing them out, yeah. Donkey Jack getting in, involved, <laughs> kicking people and yes. all this stuff. And it's it's great. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I love the energy of this scene. Yeah. It reminds me of Jimmy Neutron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The movie. With, um, don't they use... Uh, it's the same song. Yeah. Oh, do they? I think so. I thought it was Blitzkrieg Bop by the Ramones. Oh, uh, it might be. I thought it was a uh, bad reputation when they're get like they're doing a, the fight against all the aliens, right? On the movie. I th- I, I thought it w- I thought it was Blitzkrieg Bop. Maybe uh, it it's might not. Be I haven't seen it in so long. Col- collision of Worlds. We'll Maybe. have to figure that out. Regardless, Good those scene. So- both those songs were iconic to me as my in my childhood. I remember hearing Blitzkrieg Bop for the first time when I was in like fifth grade and being like, this might be the greatest song ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> thinking, thinking it was just the coolest song ever. <laughs> and it's still great. Oh, it's no, no, no. It. Okay, this is what, it's Kids in America. Oh. We're the kids in America. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that song. It has the same vibe. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. But Blitzkrieg Bop is in that movie. Is it really? Yeah, I'm looking at the soundtrack right now and they're both in it. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm the wrong one. <laughs> but yeah, I I I love this whole sequence as well, and um, just not only the information booth being iconic as it is, but the whole uh, tournament fight scene is incredible as well. Yeah, yeah. And from there, he ends up becoming the champion unknowingly, and um, Lord Farquaad has a scheme for him to go rescue Fiona, and he'll probably you know die in the process. He's thinking right, and so. Now him and Shrek come to an agreement where they say, if I go get Fiona for you, you promise like to give me my land back. And he says, yep. And he tells them, you know, squatters are going to be gone. We'll move them somewhere else. And you will, you know, have your swamp back. Won't have anything to worry about. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll go on this quest for you. And 
they end up going to make the trek to to find Princess Fiona and to rescue her and then bring her back to Lord Farquaad. Yeah. Um, my next favorite scene is not until after they've rescued her, and it's the Monsieur Hood scene. Yeah, that's, no, I, that, that's a the good part. Actually. Kung Fu scene. Oh, yes. Do you guys have anything before that, whenever she's getting rescued and things like that? No. Take it away. Go ahead. Okay. So, up until the point of this movie, um, Shrek and Donkey have successfully saved uh, Princess Fiona from her tower and are now taking her back. And on the trip back, they end up encountering Robin Hood, or like they like to call him in this movie, Monsieur Hood, and his band of merry men. And they have this whole, you know song and dance part where I still think about it. Oh, Mary man. <laughs> and then him doing the whole, I'll take this blade. I'll run it through your heart. And then Cameron Diaz's character coming in and just starting to fight people, going crazy on them, doing backhand springs, mm-hmm. kicking people in the face, doing like the matrix, like pause in the air and fix her hair. And then yeah. and kicking them and all this <laughs> stuff, punching the guy through the accordion. Like, it's great. Mm -hmm. I just love this whole part as well. It was one that really stuck out to me as a kid. And then one of the things that I really like about this scene as well is just that this is a moment where Shrek really looks at Fiona Mm. and recognizes, oh, I've been judging this girl completely wrong. Mm -hmm. I have thought that, you know, she was some stuck-up woman who was stuck in a tower and, like, wasn't any good or anything like that, couldn't really defend herself or anything. And now she just straight up took out like ten guys by herself single handedly, yeah. and I watched her do it. This girl's amazing. Mm. <laughs> like, and he like truly starts to get a little bit of feelings for her in this moment, and um, just just seeing those feelings develop further on into the movie after that. It's good. It's wholesome. It is, and it's really nice to watch somebody like Shrek who has always been rejected his entire life and been shut off from society and and. Um, shunned be able to like have someone in his life that can like bring his guard down and truly be himself and recognize like oh man this this girl's awesome yeah i I truly i I, i'm liking her well it's it's ironic because he's kind of doing the same thing to her that everyone else does to him right like Mm -hmm. judging her without even giving her a chance to really show her true colors yeah exactly. and it's, it's hard to really blame him because you know you're in such a very stereotypical fairy tale when it comes to her locked to the castle with the dragon you know mm-hmm. and even when she wakes up she's like getting ready to like she's like pretending to be asleep grabbing the flowers like trying to you yeah. know kiss me and all that yeah. like all the romantic stuff you read in the stories yeah and she's like this isn't how it's supposed to work you're yeah. supposed to uh, p- you know, go down the castle and with the rope, and you gotta land on our steed and ride off into the sunset. You yeah. know, and it's stereotypical. That's kind of what sh- you know the the life the uh, the fairy tale is. The mm-hmm. fairy tale they're in is yeah, kind of, um, and that's all he kind of thinks of her as. And then you know, as she gets to know him, I think deep. I think like even when she sees him as an ogre, she's like, oh, this this dude's an ogre. Yeah. Like, this isn't how it's supposed to go. Yeah. But she even is, is like, taken aback by it and is like, this is wrong. This is all wrong. Right. But she knows herself who she is, which is why I think she's, like, she decides to go and sing to that bird and then cook the eggs for them. Yeah. And then even when they're walking and Shrek burps, and he's, like, better out than in, um, you know, Donkey's, like... You don't do that. Don't be like that to around a princess, you know. Yeah. And she burps as well. Yeah. And he's, and he's like, like, she's just as nasty as you are. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Maybe they are meant to be. Maybe this isn't the story that's laid out for him. Yeah. And uh, it's it's good. It yeah. And that whole scene just shows that there's more to her, just like there's more to Shrek. Mm-hmm. She's an onion as well. Yeah. She's got layers. Mm-hmm. Well, and then like I think it's right after that scene we come to find out what she is. Do we find out? No. We, we don't find, find out. Well, we kind of find out in the night, actually, before she's finding Well, finding we notice it. that, like, she immediately wants to go to bed when sun rises or sunset is happening. Mm-hmm. And it's only because later in the film we find out that she's been cursed, um, that whenever sunset happens, she turns into an ogre. Yep. Um, but before that, we don't know. And mm. we get this really tender-hearted moment between Shrek and Donkey that, like... Oh, when they're sitting... 
at the, the at stars. That moon, and that moon is huge. It is. It looks crazy. Yeah. But they they have this really tender moment with one another where like Donkey's trying to get him to open up, and he's like, you know, the only thing I want to do is get this princess back and build a wall around my land and and just hang out. Like I don't want anybody around. And Donkey is like. Are you you wanting to build that wall up because you know you got something that you want to keep out or something that you want to keep in? Mm. And Shrek is like, don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. And like doesn't want to get out of upside down. Yeah. yeah. And Shrek Donkey ends up uh, ends up eventually breaking him down. And that's when we understand Shrek is like, like I I I want to be away from everybody because all I am to to everyone is a big, stupid, ugly, smelly ogre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, everybody judges me before they know me. Like, nobody takes the chance to try to get to know me. And, like, because everybody has rejected me, I'm going to reject everyone. Mm -hmm. And, like, I almost started getting, like, choked up and teary-eyed whenever, like, he's saying all that. And I'm like, you're so much more than that. And then Donkey sitting down to him and is like, you know, when I met you, I didn't think you were some big, stupid, ugly ogre. <laughs> and like th- them just and him being like, yeah, I know. And like just sharing that moment with one another and being like, you know, that's, this isn't all who you are. I, and <sighs> the fact that you think that about yourself makes me sad because I know that you're more than that, mm-hmm. you know? And then you, 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 get, you get to see Fiona like locked away, kind of watching that moment take place and kind of having sympathy for him she as well. Because she feels the same. She feels the exact same way. She knows exactly how he's feeling. Mm-hmm. Well, and she kind of did the same. She was judging him, too, because he's an ogre. Right. And, like, she doesn't know nothing about him. Mm-hmm. And now that she's heard this soft side of his heart, that's where she's like, oh, shoot, I screwed up, too, man. Yeah. yeah. So then that leads to your whole, like, love yeah, we start to f- slowly fall in love together. Yeah, doing but simple acts for each other. Yeah, and then it it ends up in the morning whenever she you know is like, hey, we got off on the wrong foot, made these eggs. Right, <laughs> and that whole scene is funny too. It's iconic where she's singing like serenading Ooh. the birds, and then she, she like higher holds the that high note to where the bird just explodes. <laughs> yes, and um, comes back, makes some eggs, and is like, hey, I think we got off on the wrong foot. I made you guys some eggs. Um, I'm excited to get back on our trip. Like, let's. Get going. Yeah, that's where we get that meme from. I don't know why. It's funny. It's so funny. <laughs> um, and then, you know, they end up t- getting Jeff back on their trip. Deal. It is. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we end up going back on our trip. And then this is another moment where I – it's ingrained in my mind. Like, them walking with one another – her um, seeing like the the branch with the spider and all the all the flies and stuff, and she like <laughs> goes and catches it all and makes it into like this like mutton leg and gives it to Shrek and Shrek is like chomping on it, yeah. eating it. Um, him like s- hugging a tree and like making it a bridge over this little river so that way they can cross and her kind of like touching his back a little bit and him getting all kind of <laughs> like she touched me you know <laughs> like him get just giddy and boyish it's, yeah it's fun to watch and it's also wholesome because you're like oh like he's really breaking down he's he we're watching this guy with such a tough exterior be broken down by someone that he that he likes and that might like him back possibly mm-hmm. and even the iconic like blowing up the frog and the snake and making them into balloon animals and <laughs> walking off with one another, pushing each yeah, other into the, like, he goes, Dude, <laughs> launch into the bush <laughs> and like, he, you know, starts running and everything. It's just, it's a, a wholesome like little montage that just shows so much within the span of like three or four minutes where, you know, you, if you've been in that situation, you <laughs> can feel what Shrek is feeling mm-hmm. and you can, you know, be put in his shoes and be like man i've i've been in that situation where i am just head over heels for somebody and like i just i only want to be around them and mm-hmm. I've, I've been there it's it's great yeah i love it yeah i love it too and i'm upset because you know they're sitting down there uh the sun's going down they're like not getting closer to each other yeah they're about to smooch and the donkey of course is the third wheel yeah. always kind of blocking them <laughs> yeah and reminds her that it's uh, sunset, so she goes away. And then Shrek gets kind of, he's like, "I'm gonna go and get more fire for the w- for the for the fire pit." And then he looks over, there's already a bunch of fire mm-hmm. or already a bunch of wood, so he knows something's up. But Shrek goes and he takes a long pause. He goes and picks some sunflowers, and he's like, "I I feel like the whole time he's like, 
what am I going to tell her? How am I going to talk to her? How yeah. am I going to, you know, he's her up. Himself up. Yeah. He's even rehearsing what he's saying. Yeah. He's like, I picked up these flowers because I thought they were pretty. And he's I like, think well, you're pretty. And it reminded me of it you. It reminded me of you. And oh, this like, is stupid. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's yeah. good, right? Yeah. But then you, this is the reveal of seeing Fiona finally turn into a, an ogre. Yeah. We don't see it, but Donkey comes into the, her hut and is looking so, for her. Oh! Ah! <laughs> she's like, oh my, you ate the princess! <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, all that funniness. And you realize Fiona is actually an ogre. Mm-hmm. And this is what she's been hiding the entire time. Yeah. And they have these kind of real tender moments where Donkey, again, is like, he's just the most wholesome guy. Yeah. Real, making her realize that, like, you feel like this? Right now, imagine Shrek. He's he's an ogre twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> and trying to get her to empathize a little bit more with the situation. Being an ogre isn't all bad. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he's like, you don't have to go to Lord Farquaad. You know, you're an ogre. He's Shrek's an ogre. Shrek's an ogre. I mean, it's kind of like it's perfect, perfect match. Yeah, it's perfect. And then she's like, she starts to say like, she like, she says it's like, not what she envisioned for her life, right? But she talks about um, saying like. An ugly beast, no one would like that. It's, you know, that's not where I belong. Yeah. That's not my story. Yeah. And Shrek over here is just that part of it. Yeah. Not realizing that she's talking about herself. Mm-hmm. She, he thinks he, she's talking about him. About him. Saying and Shrek saying, is like, an ugly beast and that she would, who would ever want to be around someone like him? And he gets pissed. Yeah. He, it's, he, he just he as goes, easily built that. Wall. All girls are the same. He starts going Juice World on him. <laughs> he I built admit it. Another up got me finished. That's Shrek right there. <laughs> he builds that wall right back up. Yep. Onion closes up. And um, I hate it because it's such a small miscommunication. Mm-hmm. And you see them in the morning. Fiona turns back into princess and Shrek is comes up and he's pissed Mm -hmm. like yelling at her here he's like i heard you how dare you like i hate that yeah (laughs) i hate pretty much all that and then uh she is misinterpreting him thinking that he knows the truth but is unable to accept that she's the ogre Mm -hmm. and she's like i thought it wouldn't be a problem like she's got she's upset there's just this whole big miscommunication between the two they're they're both like kind of pissed at each other Mm -hmm. and then you see lord farquaad kind of come up come and in. sweep her off her feet yeah and she kind of goes just to spite shrek yeah, a little bit like, let's get married today yeah yeah and it's tough my scene comes in when hallelujah starts playing. yeah it tell me it's not such a powerful moment it is whenever shrek is sitting on one opposite end of and the table like, and it like fades and then she's sitting on the other end and she's doing the same they're thing. both like <laughs> it's what did i get here it's How? great and then coupled with leonard cohen's hallelujah it's 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 incredible. It makes me genuinely so sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know how it did. It's these animated characters, but I feel so bad because what Shrek thought he wanted at the beginning was solitude, yeah. was being able to eat alone, being able to be by himself. But then he found that person. And now it feels so lonely. Yeah. Now he he's sitting it. there, like, with his food, and he's, like, <laughs> you know, like, in depressed depression, and it's, like, you see, and then you see her not happy, but she's all yeah. in this gown. Like it's almost like it's not fitting her because it's not her. Yeah. And I am so impressed with the transitions too. Yeah. Like you see him, I don't know. I forget what he throws away. He throws away the flower. Yeah. Into the fireplace, and then the fireplace zooms out, and she's standing there all alone it's by the fireplace. So, yes, it's so good. Yeah. I even think of her pushing the, uh, the yes. cake topper down, like <laughs> to like where. Lord Farquaad's his actual height. Yes. And like having this look of disappointment on mm-hmm. her face. Or I think of when she's looking at the, the plate of armor and mm-hmm. it like transitions it, to it on his on Shrek's head and at his house. Yeah. Good stuff. I yeah. felt genuinely terrible. Yeah. And <laughs> I was and rooting for this couple. Yeah. I was too. And this is when this is why I love Donkey so much too. Yeah. Because he comes in and saves the day. Yeah. He comes back to Shrek and says I'm building a wall around my half because I did half the work. This is going to be my half. You stay on your side. I'm going to stay on my side. And they yeah. get in this this fight that friends have are probably all too familiar with that you've been in one time or another. And um, they end up, you know, forgiving one another. And Donkey is like, 
the harbinger of like all that's good. <laughs> yeah, like he, like he is like the the shining ex- example of like everything that's good in this world uh, that's created here in Shrek, and like you know he goes up to him and is like you know Princess Fiona really liked you, maybe even loved you, mm-hmm. and he goes loved me. She couldn't stand the sight of me. She couldn't c- hope to call me an ugly beast, you know, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And that's when he's like, oh, she's, oh, talking, she's about someone. talking about someone else, yeah. you know, like doesn't want to tell her secret. And he goes, well, who was she talking about? You got to tell me then if it wasn't about me. And um, like, why don't you go ask her? Yeah. And they end up forgiving one another. And it's a big moment when Shrek says, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because you don't hear a lot of people say, I'm sorry. Especially a strong headed man like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's him being vulnerable again yeah. and, and realizing that, yeah, I wronged you because I was scared to get hurt again, Yeah, but you still love me enough to come and forgive me. Yeah. Even when I don't I even, deserve it. Yeah, I even love that that line that Donkey has where he says, that's what friends do. They forgive each other. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, Shrek has never thought of Donkey as a friend. Mm-mm. Like, he's never thought of anyone yeah. in his life as a friend. And he's like having this moment of realization that like this guy is calling me his friend and he's willing to to forgive me for the wrongdoing that I did. Like the least that I can do is say that I'm sorry. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wholesome. Yeah. And so he ends up saying he's sorry. They get dragon to come <laughs> in and Dude, tell me I how a donkey bagged him. Bagged her. He's he's the He's the, the he's the <laughs> And he doesn't even want her. I just be. think she's lonely. He's got to be. Dude, it's so funny he, when she blows the heart and he's like, oh, I don't think we could be in this He's like, oh, I got I'm, asthma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you, you blowed all those O's. I can't be around you. <laughs> yeah. All those family yeah. or something like that. Oh, it's yeah, so and like good. Even whenever she's like got him wrapped up in his tail in the castle and he's like, you making all these physical unwanted, unwanted physical advances, advances on me and I'm not really here for it. And she's like, oh, what are you doing with that? Oh, don't go bite my tail down there. That's a sensitive area. Like, <laughs> like it's it's great. Eddie Murphy kills it. He kills Again, it, man. I forget how Eddie Murphy kills it. Yeah. yeah. He bags that dragon, too. <laughs> yeah, he does. They end up having kids later yeah, down the that's line. Crazy. Explain that. It works. I don't know how it does. It's fairy tale. I said photosynthesis. <laughs> Something. Some of that fairy dust. Yeah. But... They end up getting on the dragon and flying to Duloc to stop the wedding from taking place. And um, even that is like a right at the end, like is a tear jerker for me. <laughs> yeah, I get wholesome again. Yeah. And like, you know, they he's like throwing donkey to see like what's going on. up. You got to be there when someone says, does anyone subject? He's yeah, like, that's you. That's your moment. Yeah. And he's thrown away. He's like, that already passed. You got to go. Yeah. I hate it because Donkey, like, he has no time, pretty much. Yeah. And Donkey's like, wait, 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 yeah. just throw me. Yeah. You know, like, kind of kind of wasting all his time. He's, just, like, throwing them up there going, they're at the altar. There's a lot of people there. There's a lot of people there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And then he ends up breaking in and just going, I, I object. object. <laughs> and he's running down there. Everyone's trying to stop him. Everybody's all yelling because, again, it's, it's an, an ogre. ogre. Yeah. And so, you know, he's just telling fiona all of his feelings and just saying like you shouldn't be with lord farquaad i love you you should be with me and it's touching really well, it really is it, the way it's he shot his shot and he scored no, he didn't really though he's still like if you notice how it plays out he still is a little too shy to say it mm-hmm. and it's it's brought up in like a he's being shunned for his feelings Mm. And like you hear Lord Farquhar go, oh, this idiot yeah. really thinks he's he can back the, the princess. O- yeah, he's in love with the princess, and everyone's like laughing. Oh, he at put him. he has those like little cue cards, and it or says laughter. laugh, and yeah. everyone's like, oh, laugh and making fun of him. But you see the tender moment between him, and you see her going like, Shrek, is this true? Like, and you hear everyone laughing, and you kind of see his like ears flop down. Yeah, like he's really down in the dumps. But you see her kind of like bring him back, and he's like, yeah, yeah. And he, that's when the truth kind of comes out yeah and they and kiss yeah they get well they first well, off they first get like off, they try to like, get each like, other they're getting separated by all the guards yeah, and that's true. shrek is fighting tooth and nail to get to her and um eventually they end up getting to one another and fiona breaks off and sees that it's sunset and is like I okay to show i'm you. gonna show you like who i truly am this is this is me and she you know ends up transforming into the ogre or ogress 
whatever you want to call her. Okay. Know. And um, when she transforms, Shrek kind of is like, holy wow. cow, like, this, this is you. And Lord Farquaad immediately is like, oh, it's hideous. Get her out God, of here. Get her out of here. That's also again and, his and fault. He, yeah, but also, like, this just goes to prove how much of a scumbag this guy is where he says, this marriage is binding. I am king. He puts the crown on his head and it says, like, lock her in a dungeon for 50 years. Don't let her out. You know, all this stuff. And just, like, shows goes to show that he was only wanting to get married to Thank instill you. that title. And, um, like, while that is all happening, Donkey and Dragon come out of nowhere, crash the party, and Shrek and Fiona get to have this moment with one another. And uh, Lord Farquaad <sighs> ends up getting eaten, yeah, which feels, does. like, incredibly so uh, earned because we've just watched this guy be nothing but terrible. Mm-hmm. And um, they get to have their moment with one another. I, l- I love it. I do, too. When they kiss and she goes, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the lights coming out of her. Yeah, and you th- you see her fall to the ground. You don't really know what form what she's happened. in. Yeah, and when you see her, it's she's the ogre, and she's like, "Wait, I'm, I thought I'm supposed true to love's to first kiss was ter- supposed to turn me into my my truest form." Yeah, she said, "I'm supposed to be beautiful," yeah. and then he looks at her and goes, "You are beautiful." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah," oh, I got so like choked up. Yeah, because it's you're he's, rooting for them. It's yeah. you're finally seeing. Someone who thought their life was trash. Like I hate to say it like this, but yeah. like this person thought no one is ever gonna want them. I'm an ogre. I'm ugly. Like I'm the worst of the worst. I'm the bottom of the barrel. Nobody's yeah. gonna want this. Mm-hmm. And then he found someone mm-hmm. who is, in definition, the bottom of the barrel. But in his eyes, is it's top of the is top of the, the line. Crop. Yeah. Like, and so now, like, seeing when they finally kiss and. You, again, you hear him say, "You are beautiful." You're like, "Dude, yes!" Like, "Oh, Shrek!" Like, "You deserve this. Mm-hmm. You don't deserve to be treated like crap." And again, you just, you're rooting for this couple. And yeah, it feels so good, and it's it's crazy to think because I never would have would have thought of Shrek and thinking about thinking about it like that. Yeah, watching it now. Yeah, yeah, watching it with a uh, with a cr- with a critical mindset really brought out all of the like deeper meaning in it and really just the message that it it tries to push forward and i think it does very successfully oh yeah definitely and um yeah really an incredible movie i i wouldn't have thought like i was thinking going into shrek like oh we're watching this for like the memes you know but i I left it and i was like (laughs) that was genuinely so wholesome and like really good i was (laughs) so surprised Mm -hmm. but yeah i'm uh excited that we that we picked this one because it was a good one for sure me too so if that's it for our favorite scenes. It is. Oh wait, first we gotta talk about the credits. Dude, oh, because the, yeah, the I song. love Donkey going I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I lo- How did I, I saw her face. Yes. Now I'm a believer. It's Again. He sounds so good too. Yeah, it's Eddie great. Murphy kills it. He does. Yeah. yeah. He's great. And, and everyone's there and dancing. Yeah. yeah it's, it's great. You know what this is really off topic, it's a little rabbit hole. But I was telling Isaiah, I said, you know what one of my favorite movies is with Eddie Murphy? Norbit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how it will go. Go down the slide. Yeah. Oh Norbit is gosh. crazy. But yeah, that's the end of Shrek. And they live happily ever after. Yeah. They got the fairy tale ending. Yeah, they did. They got the fairy tale ending that they they deserved. Yeah, they kind of created themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Super nice. Yeah. So with that being in the end of our favorite scenes. What are the best quotes? There are a lot. Dude, uh, I'm making waffles. I'm making waffles. Absolute We swap manly stories, and in the morning, I'm, I'm making waffles. waffles. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Obviously, the iconic, what are you doing in my swamp? Yep, yep. That's Great. an absolute classic. Another one for me that I just laughed at every time was the three little pigs whenever they get forced onto the land. And he's like, what are you doing here? And he goes, Lord Farquaad. He hoofed and he poofed and he signed an eviction notice. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's true, so though. Funny. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And then another one for me is pick number three, my lord. Dude, that oh, one yeah. is so funny. Yeah. I'm not a puppy. I'm a real boy. Yeah. You didn't like the. Uh, not my gumdrop buttons. Yeah. <laughs> not my gumdrop buttons. That's a good one. That too. one's Do classic. You know the muffin. 
yeah. the Muffin Man, who lives on Drury Lane. No one. Well, lives. she's married to the Muffin Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so yeah. good. All right, nobody move. I got a dragon, and I'm not afraid to use it. I'm a donkey on the edge. Yeah, I even laugh too um, at the one where Donkey is. She sends. Uh, Fiona sends Donkey off to get a blue flower with red thorns. Oh, yeah. And he's all, blue flower, red thorns, blue flower, red thorns. This would be so much easier to find if I wasn't colorblind. <laughs> blue flower, red thorns. Yeah. Or when uh, Shrek defeats all the knights and he goes, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm here until Thursday. Try yeah. the veal. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Of course, the whole onions have layers, ogres have layers. Yeah. All he's all, parfaits are delicious. I've never <laughs> met anybody that doesn't love a parfait. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Uh, Any other ones? No, I think we always hit we hit the top one. Okay. What about bra moments? You got any bra moments for mm, Shrek? Let's see. I have one. It was uh, it was hard for yeah. I have I have two bra moments and they're kind of just silly ones. Okay. One for me was a joke that I had not caught on until I had watched it most recently, which we did a couple days ago for the pod here. And this was a joke that I had never picked up on. And um, it's whenever they're approaching Duloc and you see the size of the castle and how big it is. And Shrek says something to the effect of like, man, that's a huge castle. Do you think Lord Farquaad is compensating for something? <laughs> and I was like, I never noticed that joke as a kid. And like kind of the innuendo that that entails as is well. Is this supposed to be his height or his... I think it's both. I think it's both. Like, both. (laughs) You got to... And so, like, as as an adult, you watch it and you're like, oh, like, that's what that was supposed to be about, you know? As a kid, I never even noticed that part. Yeah, no. That went over my head immediately. There's there's a scene where he's like, magic or mirror, mirror on the wall, show me the princess or whatever, while he's in bed. And I remember there's like... You know, there's like edits that like zoom in and they do the the red circle and it points to it. And it's like all those like really yeah, obnoxious yeah, yeah. edits. But it's like, Lord Farquaad gets an erection. <laughs> it, it's honestly, when you watch what No, happens, yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it does a little it, weird. Wait, does he really? Yes. Well, it like zooms in, but it like zooms into like his like stomach. Like his crotch area. When the princess pops up, he goes, oh, yeah. And then like. You see, I don't know if it's his hand moving under the covers, but it looks like there's something that goes. No, I didn't notice that. I'll have to pull it up. I'll show you. I didn't see the hand. I don't know or if anything. It, I don't know. But I know. But I know you are correct about it. It's showing. It goes to his stomach or around his that area. <laughs> it shows that, and then it shows like the when he's got the hairy chest out, right? Yes, yes. And then it shows I've never the princess, that. and then it just goes away. Th- it's this scene. When he's yes. in bed. Yes. And I guess it pops up. It's 13 seconds. Did you want to take a look? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this. Analyze it. Look at this. Look. Because I don't know Let if this, this is the edit that I'm talking about. Woo. This bone ski. I don't know if it'll zoom in. But look. We're analyzing. Look. Down here. Watch it. Okay. Dead air. Oh, no. I see it. I'd have to, I have to zoom it in. No, it's gonna. W- this is this requires. We'll re- we'll we'll further analyze that. Yeah. bro, bro. We, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> you can. You okay. can zoom on on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah. Are you watching it? It's Dude, a yeah, little, for sure. Hold on. No, it's, but okay, he goes. See. Woo! No, it lifts I'll, I'll up pull it up. Out. I'll pull it. I'll pull it up. A bit. It's you got a real. Zo- I mean, he is compensating. You okay. <laughs> really got to <laughs> zoom in. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other bro moments here? Uh, feeding rat to the princess. And her liking yeah, it. Yeah, and her, her liking, liking it. Again, like, but he didn't know she was an ogre, so that's why it was like... Subtlety. So, yeah. And then... He, him going, I make a mean weed rat stew. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. And yeah. him, even him being like, yeah, you should come out to the swamp sometime. I'd kick you he anything. He is the only... Per- he is the... That's the only person he's ever probably invited out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That like... And that's got to be a big thing for him because this man treasures his privacy and his alone time. And, and he is fully willing to break that to allow her to come and visit. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a big moment, too, because in that scene, actually, he goes and I think he wants to ask her out. Mm-hmm. And he goes and she's about to eat the rat. And he goes, can I ask you something? And he's like getting nervous. And he goes, are you going to finish that? 
And then when he does that, he looks around and he goes, Yeah. Like, he's like, That's I'm stupid. Yeah. And um, so her eating the rat was a bro moment. And then another bro moment that I thought was cool and funny is when they blow the frog and the snake into balloons. Mm. Yeah. I thought that was just a bro moment because you never see that. Yeah. Absolute classic, yeah. My, my last one is just seeing Lord Farquaad die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Him getting eaten. And I like that they that they put up they put a book into his character because he never shows up in any of the other movies. Yeah. So like that man truly gets digested and crapped out by the dragon. Like he is no more. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the last one seeing Fiona's curse, and um, I laughed too whenever she's talking about like how ugly she is, and Donkey says. I ain't gonna lie, you are ugly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does call I her. Ugly. That was funny. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's about it for bro moments for me. me as well. All right, if that's it for the bro moments. Let's move into facts with the bros. Yeah, let me hear you for the budget. And to to be honest, I thought it was an expensive budget for a two thousand one film. It was sixty million dollars to make this movie. Yep. Um, opening weekend though, it brought forty two point three million dollars. Gross for U.S. and Canada was two hundred sixty-eight point one million, and gross worldwide is four eighty-eight point four million. Mm. Man, <laughs> almost half yeah, a billion you can, you dollars. You can see why this movie has four sequels or something four like sequels that. Yeah. and like so many mini movies. Yeah, that's true. Um, but ha- almost half a billion dollars, and I feel like that could still climb. Yeah. It's true. Um. Like, I, I think about it, like, imagine, like, in 2031, 30 years after this movie, they're like, we're going to release it again in theaters. I feel like they would do something like that. Yeah, maybe. <sighs> That's crazy. I, I was reading, too, that um, the budget's even higher because of re-recording audio mm-hmm. costing around $4 million. Yeah. Which blows my mind. I, Lisa would t- was telling me this fact, and I didn't believe her at first because yeah. – Originally, the person who voices Shrek, Mike Myers, was he was going to do it in his regular speaking voice, and then he goes and tries to do it in a Canadian accent, mm-hmm. which for some reason feels... Feels weird. Feels weird, and I think he felt that too because he tried it again, but in a Scottish, uh, the Scottish accent, mm-hmm. and ended up loving it. And he w- honestly, we, they went back and redone all of their voice work which w- was ended up costing $4 million, but to, to go with the Scottish uh, accent. Yeah, and I um, I think that's wild because apparently this movie also, like, started being made in 1996. So it started, like, I think it's October 31st of 1996 is when the production started for the computer animation side of oh, things. Wow. And this movie Dang. took, like, four years to make and like all the like including everything from production all the way up to release and so like the no reason it it cost so much money for the time that it did 60 million dollars is a lot of money especially in probably 2001 yeah um but yeah this movie like was in a development hell for so long and like i remember we were we were we watched some movie where a fact had come out and we were talking about how like um there was a, a thing around the industry where you were you could get Shreked. And um, if you got Shreked, that meant that, like, you were doomed to go work on Shrek for, um, for you know, a couple of years or something like that because you didn't do the job right on, on your current position or something like that. So then you got sent off to go work on Shrek. Like something and that it would was never like, get made yeah, or and something. It, and it, right. And it was a movie, like, that people in the industry thought was, like, never going to get made. It was going to get shelved and all this money was going to get sank into it and just never Dang. happen. Wow. And um, they called it Getting Shreked. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So I uh, I forget where and when we talked about that, but I remember that portion. Um, another thing that kind of blew my mind about this movie, I did not know that Shrek was an Oscar-winning film. Yeah. Ooh. Won Best Animated Feature um, in the 2002 Oscars. Yeah, so and that I... was crazy. So I have it pulled up real quick just because I knew you had that fact. The nominees for that category were... Who would I choose? Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. Same year, I didn't know that. Monsters, Inc., and Shrek. Those were the only three. Oh, Monsters, wow. Inc. is pretty good, though. It is. And Shrek won. Interesting. Wow. Shrek beat, a, beat out a Pixar film. That's that's film. crazy. DreamWorks got to be happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> Shrek is their saving grace. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, with that being said, Shrek after this became the forefront 
the mascot for DreamWorks. Yeah. After this, because it was, it was such a, um, such, such a, a success. Hit. Yeah. Um, yeah, he became the mascot for DreamWorks. Yeah, I was even reading too that like even though Shrek wasn't the first computer generated animation film that DreamWorks did, it was Ants oh, in God. 1991, uh, 1999. Mm-hmm. And Ants like wasn't that big of a success and they were trying to compete with Pixar and all of this stuff, but Shrek had been for such Bugs life. Yes, Shrek had Our been such a success that um they ended up like that's their like claim to fame that's what they're like really are known for is is shrek and and they have just tried to try to capture that ever since and you know i mean they're still doing that like they're still trying to compete with pixar um in in in, in that aspect so oh yeah for sure <laughs> um i have a fact here stating that eddie murphy says that the shrek series is among his best works mm so coming from the man himself, he thinks that this is some of his best work. Wow. I have I have two casting facts that I'll I'll hit real quick. The the late Alan Rickman was initial casting choice for the role of Lord Farquaad, but Which he turned it makes so much sense. Yeah, he would kill it. He would kill. I think he would kill Imagine it. Imagine Severus Snape as oh, Lord wow. Farquaad. Yeah, yeah, and that's why he, did, he decided to go with Severus Snape. Instead of Lord Farquaad. Yeah, mm. he ended up taking the role of Severus Snape for the first Harry Potter film that came out in the same year, 2001. Holy moly. Yeah, and then another quick... He he had like two golden choices, two yeah. golden choices yep. to choose from. And it d- didn't matter which one he'd choose, he'd be, yeah. be good either way. Um, And then Nicolas Cage was initially offered the role for Shrek, no. but he had turned it down. And he actually, in 2013, he said he regretted it. Um, he, he Could you imagine him as Shrek? Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Going, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta f- find the princess. <laughs> Fiona, I didn't think I love you. <laughs> I, I couldn't couldn't handle it. Yeah, and <laughs> so yeah, but he kind he says he regrets the decision. So yeah, I you mean, how much it, money you made? Yeah, I was gonna say, you see how much money Shrek made? Yeah, I think you'd be regret that decision too. I would be for sure. You know, in regards to to the making money side of things, I can only imagine how much money Smash Mouth has made from Shrek. Does it say? Do you have a fact about that? I don't, but I do know that All-Star was not originally supposed to be in the film. Really? Yeah, it was only used as a placeholder, actually, for they were hoping another song. I um, wonder what song that would have been. I wonder, too, but it was only used as a placeholder for test screenings. And test audiences loved it so much. That they decided, like, okay, let's just keep it in. And um, because Test Audience ended up liking um, Smash Mouth and All Star in the beginning of the film so much, they, let they decided do. to do let the band do a rendition of I'm a Believer at the end. Mm. And that's what, that's how we get them in the beginning and the end of the film. They only got paid $500,000. But I'm assuming they probably have some sort of contract where they get residuals or something every time the film is played and on TV or something like wow. that, you know. And the value of publicity is so, or the value of, yeah. uh, like, being recognized, I think is so much it's more. so much. Like, it's, and, and it, I, it's, I, it's like priceless kind of deal. Right. And I know that, like, Smash Mouth is, like, the meme band, you know, where, like, you put on All Star and you're like, oh, like. But they're good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but good. that's the thing is, like, these guys for years have just played into it and are like, yeah, we're those guys. And and we're going to ride this train until it, the wheels fall but off. But it kind of, <laughs> you so know, it kind of makes me wonder because it, I'm reading this right here and it says that Steve Harwell and the band almost declined the opportunity to be featured in the Shrek because they didn't want it to be seen as a Disney type band. I could see how. Maybe if you know how like when you do genres a lot, you kind of get like, that's just what you do. That's Phil just Collins. what you do. Yeah. Phil, yeah. Yeah. And but maybe they were like, we want to be hard. Yeah. I don't know how you could do that with, hey now, you're an all star. Get your so game on. Go play. <laughs> that you right that reminds me of that meme of, uh, it's a. Uh, it's the all star, but it's ten hours long, and it and it never st- it never it's starts going. Out. And it goes, and they don't stop coming, and they, they don't, don't stop, stop coming, coming, and yeah. they don't stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. 
<laughs> it is 10 hours <laughs> long. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh, man. I had a fact that kind of blew my mind. Uh, it was a question I had in the film about the the bear with the bow on his head in Lord mm-hmm. Farquaad's castle. Uh, in the beginning, when the fairy tale creatures 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 arrive at uh, Shrek's swamp, you see the Papa Bear, you know, consoling the little kid bear, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to be um, well. You don't know what happens to the Mama Bear uh, until you get to Lord Farquaad's castle, and you see it, you the Mama Bear a rug. into a rug. So it's like the mom literally like got captured and died, and the son is crying about it. <laughs> That's crazy. Um. I wish that they kept with that, but if you continue on watching after the after the credits, there's a whole like uh, karaoke scene where Shrek turns on an amp and he's, they start singing like it's all these really old classic songs, mm. and you see Lord Farquaad singing a song in the be- uh, the belly of the dragon, oh, really? and then you see the mama bear there in the in the dragon in the no no in the like she's singing a song with oh. the people. Oh okay, but in my head canon, she's dead. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know uh, what I didn't I didn't I mean I guess oh, I could have knew this but did that show up for you guys? What? Like after the credits? No. I didn't watch after the credits. Where's like that whole song and dance number? Oh where it's the wolf going, Who let the dogs out? I didn't watch that part. Oh, okay. I, I didn't think know that, if that it was sounds vaguely familiar. I didn't me. know if it was just for the D V D or not. Was did was it streaming? No, I watched it on on the thing oh, wow. did. Okay. Yeah. On Pluto. Interesting. I knew this this p- fact that I'm about about to bring up, but not to this detail actually. But it was originally Shrek was originally supposed to be voiced by Chris Farley, mm. and um, because of Chris Farley's untimely death that mm. happened um, whenever the film started uh, production, um, he ended up having to go with somebody else and they even got to the point with chris farley where he even recorded some lines and like had dialogue um recorded for the film and um because of his because of his death and them not being able to finish all the lines they had to look for somebody else and um the role ended up getting given to mike myers who was chris farley's fellow co-star in saturday night live and um Mike Myers almost didn't want to do it at first because he thought that it would be like disrespectful to Chris Farley to take it from him. And so um, with a lot of persuasion, he ended up taking it and um, they ended up putting up like little homages mm. to Chris Farley in the film as Shrek. So like there's a, a moment in Shrek where he does like air quotes and that's supposed to be an homage to one of Chris Farley's characters. He played oh. in Saturday night live named um, Bennett Brar who is the guy that goes the living in a van down by the river. If you've ever seen that skit in Saturday night live, um, that's supposed to be a little homage to him as well as a couple other things. in the oh, film. That's cool. Yeah. That is uh, unfortunate. Chris Farley. Yeah. Uh, something that I thought was kind of funny and Isaiah kind of pointed out yesterday too, was that the F for Lord Farquaad's thing kind of looks like the Facebook emblem. Oh, <laughs> it does. It dude. does. It's kind of like uncanny. Like, <laughs> and then fun fact: he actually uses a lowercase f to reflect his small stature. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that does. It's only fitting for that guy. You know what I didn't know? Shrek actually means monster in Yiddish. I just read that. Yeah, and um, it's actually derived from the German word "shriek," which means terror or fright. Oh. I that makes sense. Know. I didn't like. I didn't even think it was a real thing because Yiddish does not sound like a real language. Yiddish is uh, Jewish. Is it? Yes. Yeah, like Jewish people, Orthodox Jew, uh, Orthodox Jewish people speak Yiddish. Um, the last fact that I have here: Steven Spielberg was originally going to produce this film in 1991. Whenever he was in charge of Amblin Entertainment, which is a production company he was yeah. a part of. If that had been the case, the film would have been in hand-drawn animation and was going to star Bill Murray as Shrek <laughs> and Steve Martin as Donkey. Steve Martin. It's wow. kind of crazy. Yeah. And I was like, I, I read that and I was like, man, that would have been a, a completely different film. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think nowhere near as much talked about as it is today, you know, if, if that ended up being the case. Mm-hmm. So. 
yeah, that's it for the facts for me. Yeah, that's it for me. Me too. All right. What didn't work in this film? <sighs> I got nothing. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, not nothing. <laughs> Is yeah. that a, I can't really think of anything. Pacing was great. It's animation an hour and held an hour, up. It's an hour, hour and a half. Really? really? You, you 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 got it on 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 the head with the pacing. Still looks good, like you animation said. Animation do the cloth physics. Yeah, so nice. They're so good. Um, voice acting still holds up. Yeah. There's like no moments where like you're like, oh man, that's like buffered. No. Or, or anything like that. The story is awesome. The story's great. It makes you, you understand it very well. Comedy is really balanced. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and you can show this to a kid and love it. You can show it to an adult and understand it. Yeah. And love it as well and laugh yeah. at parts. Yeah. It's got know? something for everyone. Yeah. Well, so I what did work. It, I so it sounds like we're immediately into what did work. All right. Yeah. And for me is this movie... Still hit. Yeah. Very From much the last so. time I lost, saw it, which I don't remember, to today, dude, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I told I was at work today. I said, dude, I watched. I was like, I watched Shrek again, and I it's such a good movie. Mm-hmm. And I love it for a two thousand one film. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, I have to agree with you. I no qualms. No, I think it's great. Yeah. It got me to feel something. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. And I was surprised. I was like, man, I. Shrek is making me feel something right now that I've never felt watching it before. Yeah. And um, it really did its job. Again, you know, I'll, I'll sing its songs and uh, and its praises. Incredible voice acting. Incredible writing. Great direction. Animation holds up, like mm-hmm. we had said. Um, it's funny. <laughs> and it's funny Gosh. when it needs to be. It's serious when it needs to be. Yeah. Um, it has a, an, a, a really wholesome message that like pushes home this this narrative of finding someone that you can truly be yourself around and not being afraid to open up and if if a kid needed to hear that message like they are going to hear it with a film like Shrek mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it and it's so important and i i have to say i really really did enjoy my watch yeah. with it i yeah. i think it's really smart it feels timeless i think in in a w- because they, um, you know, you think of it as a fantasy and you think of it as a fairy tale and it almost seems, you know, there's people with pitchforks, all that kind of old in time stuff, but it still feels relatively timeless because they, the comedy is always grounded in something that's not far away from us. Like the bachelorette scene that we still have scenes like that, like game show esque yep. scenes, the WWE moves, like it all feels weirdly today re- like relevant and recent yeah. yeah which i think makes it feel timeless yeah it's great definitely yeah well dang. if that's it for what did work who wins this movie i i'm doing mike myers okay. i'm doing eddie murphy i was gonna say eddie murphy do you think so Dude, Is eddie murphy killed i'm telling you i forget how good he eddie steals murphy the show is. sometimes man. yeah w- would it be a Cop out to pick them both. It's kind of like know. Shrek and Donkey it, they're, duo. They're a yeah, duo for sure. They are. So I don't know, can't but have I mean, one without the other. Yeah. But who's funnier in the second one? I don't know. I, I have to rewatch the second it. one. Yeah, so see, Lisa has been one. begging me to pick it <laughs> to watch. Yeah, I haven't seen the second one in so long, and I have to rewatch it as well. Yeah. But I yeah, I'm picking Eddie Murphy, 100. percent Okay. Same yeah. here. Don't blame you. All right. What are we rating this? I gave it a nine. Okay. What are you giving it? I want to hear what you. No, I don't know. I haven't rated it yet. I don't know. Sometimes I come into these without it, and then, or like I have a general idea, and then when we talk about what what we liked and what we didn't like, it really like gets solidified. I'm just sitting here like I don't know. So then, what were you sitting at when you came? I gave it an eight. Yeah, I was sitting, but I was sitting really at an eight. Yeah, is where I was at. I gave it an eight. I had I I walked in with an eight. Oh, and you you I talked gave it a nine. Okay. talking about it up to two and nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna go with an eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It it's a good movie. Yep. It's it's classic. It's better yeah. than good. It's genuinely great. Yep. Everybody should watch this. Yep. This if is a movie that I would recommend to everybody. Yeah. If you haven't done it, do it. It's a great film. Yeah. So, all right. 
that's the end of the episode you guys so if you stuck all the way to the end we appreciate you if you're watching on youtube leave us a like subscribe to the channel and uh a comment as well helps out um it lets us know that you guys are liking what we're doing maybe something we could change up Uh, if you're listening on the audio platforms leave us a rate and review and do that as well for us so that way we can um get your guys's feedback know that you guys are liking what we're doing something that we need to change up suggestions film recommendations things of that nature if you don't want to do it on such a public platform you can click into our episode descriptions and follow us on social media platforms like instagram letterboxd or you can email us and uh, let us know what you want to over a a much more private um, form of communication if that's something that you're looking for Hmm. so without further ado we're going to introduce the next pick which is mine Mm -hmm. And we are going to be doing another Wes Anderson film that I I, tr- I personally love. I think it's one of his funniest films. And I don't think you guys have seen it. I've lent you my copy <laughs> of Criterion. <laughs> I know exactly where it's at in my bookshelf. <laughs> so you'll have to check it out and then let me get my copy back so I can watch <laughs> yes, it again. Yes, I will. Uh, but I think it's currently streaming on, if you have MGM+, Plus. That's non-existent That's to me. Never, yeah. I've never or heard of it. You'll never catch me <laughs> yeah, putting I, my credit card information yeah. to that. Or I also saw it being on Prime if you have a premium subscription. Ooh. So I don't know what that entails if you um, if you do have that or not, regular Prime or something. I'm not entirely sure. But it is there as well. And we're going to be watching Wes Anderson's Rushmore. It was his second film, if I'm not mistaken. And it's his first one working with Bill Murray. And like Ooh. I had said, I think this is his his funniest film. It is a a movie about a a young kid in high school who falls in love with his teacher and tries to battle for the love of his teacher with a grown man who <laughs> is played by Bill Murray, who is also <laughs> trying to battle for the teacher's attention as well. And it, it's genuinely so funny. And um, I recently rewatched it. Um, I want to say maybe about two months ago, and it's one of his films that I have like returned to the least. And when I rewatched it again, I was just like, and this movie is so much fun. And like, I, and you genuinely get to see Wes Anderson really step into his style even heavier, um, with this film. Um, and he makes like leaps and bounds from where he was at with bottle rocket. So this is a second film then? Yes. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. So tune in next week to hear what we have to say about Rushmore. As always, this has been the Film Bros Podcast. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Good night.